Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I'm Andrew Lewis and today we're going to be working on masks. So in this tutorial we're going to be creating a transparent and color mask and we're going to be applying that to a particle system in Blender. So let's get started. But first, what are masks? Well, masks are essentially black and white textures that define how a material or texture is applied. And why would we want to use masks? Well, uh, multiple reasons. Uh, we can use them for quick color changes. Uh, so basically you would have a black and white texture that is going into the factor value of a mix shader and you can just change the diffuse value whose color without actually having to create a new texture altogether. Hiding unwanted particles. This is especially true for transparency masks. And if you had parts of a particle system that just didn't look right or they were in the wrong area and you couldn't really get rid of them, uh, you could use a transparency mask to essentially hide them. Uh, defining glossy values. So with any shader, uh, mostly diffuse shaders, uh, you can use a mask to define where the glossiness is applied to that mesh. And creating textures with only shaders. Uh, this is something that we're going to do in this tutorial. And basically it's just going to be a simple uh, one color texture and we're going to use a mask to kind of break it up. So why would we want to use masks instead of weight painting? Now we know that weight painting can define the areas of a particle system in the vertex group option. Well, uh, weight painting is defined by the mesh's density, whereas masks, it's defined by the detail of the texture density. So this is the particle system that I will be using for this tutorial. If you'd like to follow along, it's really simple. All you need to do is open up Blender, uh, add in a mesh. I used a plane, so shift A, plane. You can also do that by using the add button on the uh, lower header. Just uh, scale up a bit. In the particle system, you want to create a new particle system, so just click new. Switch from emitter to hair. I used 15,000 particles and length of one. Uh, you can use as little or as many as you'd like. Uh, now you want to switch the uh, children from none to interpolated. And I uh, just switched the uh, render down to 10. You do not need it at 100. Now, as you see, it says a uh, default material in the render. So we actually got to create two materials. Uh, one is for the plane, and the second is our hair material. So in the render system settings, you want to switch from the uh, plane material to the hair material. And the hair material itself is just uh, the hair shader. Just uh, give it a random color. And if I were to render that right now, the uh, plane is just a default gray, and the particles are a blue color. Let's go uh, back to this particle system. Uh, the reason it uh, looks different is because I played around with the particle system settings. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. I'll be covering that in a later tutorial. Uh, but for now, this is just going to focus on masks with the uh, material settings. So the first material that we're going to create is a simple transparency mask for our particle system. And the reason you'd want to use a transparency mask is primarily if you wish to hide something. And what you're hiding is other particles. So say you have a character with eyebrows, and those eyebrows actually come from a particle system emitting from the head instead of a separate mesh. Uh, one problem that can arise is the particle system might be too big. So you need to cut it down, essentially. One way to do that is to go into the uh, particle edit settings. And under the brush settings, you can use cut. And you can just start hacking away at the particles. But one problem with using the cut tool is it doesn't get rid of the particles. It just, it just cuts them a little bit. It does not delete them. So we can use a mask to just hide those particles all together. So to create a mask, all you need to do is go into the UV image editor. Here, there's an example ma mask right there. But to create a new one, just click New. Uh, these are your default settings. Uh, just give it a random name. And for the size, I'm just going to use the default values but you can make it as low or as high as you'd like. Just click OK. 
So now we have a black texture. This is the texture that we'll be working with. But before we can work with it, we actually have to save it to the computer. Uh, if we don't save it to the computer, uh, it just won't work with Blender. So now that's saved, let's go into our material. We're going to first start off with the uh, material for our plane. Now the reason I want to use the plane is because we have to texture paint to make the mask. And you can't texture paint on particles. So I'm just going to go into the node editor. And these are the settings for our plane material. I'm just going to add in an image texture, which I will load in our transparent mask. And I'm not going to attach it to the diffuse node. And the reason for that is I just want to be able to texture paint. I don't want to actually use the I don't want to use the texture mask as the texture for the diffuse shader. So if I go into texture paint, our plane is now black. So if we go in the UV image editor here, we can actually see the result of our texture. So if I were to do a squiggly line here, it'll pop up. And so essentially, this is our texture. Whatever is in white will be transparent, and whatever is black will remain as it is. But for this, I'm just going to go around the borders, because it'll be a lot easier to see when I actually add it to the hair material. So now we have a little bit of a square. So the border is going to be transparent, and what's in the center is going to be our normal material. So now I want to save that texture. And in the node editor, I want to switch to our hair material. So this is the hair setup that I have for the tutorial. Uh, I have two colors right here, but I'm not going to use those colors yet. I'm going to add in a shader, so a transparent shader. And I'm going to attach that to the mix shader. Now if I don't have anything in the factor, this slider is just how much of a mix it is. It's just doing pretty much a 50-50 blend of transparent and a diffuse blue. Now if I add in a texture, put that in the factor, the texture will be defining what is transparent and what is not. Let's add in our transparent mask. Now if we go to the uh, preview, you can see if I switch to the circle that our texture is taking effect. So now if I were to render, we can see that our transparent mask is working. So everything that is in white is now transparent, and everything that is black is still blue. Now there's one problem, though, with using a transparent mask. When I say transparent, that does not mean that the material is invisible. It's still being rendered. So when it's being rendered, that actually means that light is still passing through all those particles, which is why we get this little black look. Now the only way to fix that really is if we were to essentially shorten well, or thin out our hairs. So if we go into the particle system settings, uh, pretty much make the root uh, 0.01 instead of 0.1, and so now they're a lot finer. And now that it's finer, light takes less time, well it's passing through less of a material. And so now it's pretty much gone. There's very little, if any, black showing up. Now, the only problem with this, though, is, again, the hair particles are really fine, which may not be that realistic. Now, let's say instead of a transparent uh, mask, we just want to do a color mask. So it's very simple, we're using the same mask. We can just input this second color. And now we have a simple mix of white and blue. So if I were to render that now, we have a mix of orange and blue. 
Let's just uh, thicken that up a bit. Now with masks, you're not limited to just one mask per material. You can use as many as you want. So if you wanted to create something like a tiger stripe pattern, uh, essentially what you do is you would create one material as your base hair, uh, one color of a stripe would be another mask, and then you would create another mask after that for every subsequent material. So the way you would do that is we have our color set up right here. We're going to add in another color. So I just add in a mix shader here and another hair shader. And for this color, let's just say, for the sake of it, uh, let's add in a color ramp and let's just make it purple. So when you're working with hairs, uh, you want basically the color ramp to be an up and down, so you kind of get a gradual change in color as you go from the root of the hair to the top. So to do that, just need to go into Hair Info, and you're going to put Intercept into the Factor. So let's add another there, and there you go. Now, right now, it's just another 50-50 mix. So if I were to render that, as you see, we're going to a little uh, kind of a weird color mix there. So we need to create another mask. So let's call this uh, purple mask. And I did not click OK. Yep, and then save it. And now let's go back to our node editor, so our material. And let's add in an image texture. Let's open that up, and there we go. So now, in order to get how this is working, it's all you're doing is reading from left to right. So here we have our first material. So we have the blue and we have a mask which is controlling where the orange and the blue are. So we can consider this a separate material. And now on top of that, now we have another texture that is going to define where the purple is. And that's just going to be laid right on top of that first material. So let's go back to our plain material. And add in our purple mask. And I'm just going to go from corner to corner here. Very simple. I'm going to save that. Now, if I go back the hair material, click the strands there, you can see that it's taking effect now. So let's uh, just get those particles up and render. And as you can see, we now have our little orange and blue squares with a purple stripe going through it. And you can do this, there are many uses for texture masks. Uh, you can use them for pretty much every purpose. Uh, you can even control glossiness with a mask. So when you're working with uh, complex projects, uh, masks are going to be your friend. But the great thing about them is they are incredibly simple to make. And that's a... Uh, so uh, once you get the masks uh, all down, uh, you can get very creative with uh, how you want your materials set up. So you could even say you want some hair that emits light. So let's go into the shader. Let's an add shader here right before purple. 
and let's add in an emission. And we're going to make that the same color. Just uh, set that to maybe two. Very low. There you go. Now you got uh, hair that essentially emits light. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Andrew Lewis, and I will see you next time.